The peace between two kingdoms is at stake after an assassination attempt on the Northern Yan Emperor. Eight clans are told to send their best warriors to a tournament where a grand field marshal will be chosen for the next war. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to recap and review a sci-fi film called Double World. Let's check it out. Two representatives of the Northern Yan visit the King of Southern Zhao. While the King is distracted by the fancy gifts, the representatives reveal themselves as assassins and attack the royalty. The royal guards are able to protect the king, but the grand tutor, Guan, points out that the attempt to kill the king was a call to war. With the king's approval, the grand tutor sends a message to all the clans under the kingdom. He releases eagles to relay the messages that each clan should choose three representatives to be sent to the capital city. All warriors will compete with each other and the winner will become the Grand Field Marshal. In the King Yang clan, Yi Long, a young orphan, seeks to get some drinking water for himself. Unfortunately, the security guards caught him stealing again, so they tried to apprehend him. While running away from the guards, he accidentally causes a wooden scaffolding to crumble. On the other hand, Han, a deserter, protects the girl under the fallen structure. Caught off guard, he catches the thief and ties him upside down. The messenger eagle arrives, so the clan chief calls the villagers' attention. He announces the upcoming tournament in the capital. Wanting to prove himself to the villagers and find out his origins, Yi Long volunteers himself while the other two volunteers are Hun and Ki. Before leaving, the young orphan visits his mother's grave and takes the broken comb she left. The chief returns a broken spear to Hun with his family name engraved on it. The three warriors start their journey into the desert. While traveling, Ki shares a story about a mystic forest in the capital that can reveal everything about the past. Being confined to his stories, a huge scorpion hiding in the sand launches a surprise attack. The scorpion stings the distracted warrior from the back and drags him down the sand. Hun bravely cuts one of the scorpion's pinchers, causing it to retreat. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. Even though the fight scene was pretty short, it was amazing. They proceed with their journey, attempting to find a new member. Otherwise, they will be disqualified. During the previous war, Northern Yan, Hun's brother, was the field marshal leading the army of Southern Zhao. Hun fought alongside his brother, and they were winning at the beginning. His brother successfully hunted the former general. However, the Grand Tutor Guan refused to send more troops. The entire army of Southern Zhao was wiped out by the other side, causing their defeat. Being the lone survivor of that war, Hun was labeled a deserter. One night, an emissary from Northern Yan secretly visits the Grand Tutor Guan. Apparently, Guan is a spy working for the enemy nation. His mission is to get rid of the Imperial family of Southern Zhao by detaining them during the tournament finals. According to the messenger, the king is becoming impatient and questioning his loyalty. With only one month left, the traitor promises that the Southern Zhao will perish. Back in the desert, the two warriors from the Qingyang clan continue their journey. They encounter another clan chasing a young girl, Jinggang, who stole a totem from another clan. A huge sandstorm suddenly appears, so they hide and cling to the huge rock formation. The kind orphan attempts to save the leader of the other clan. In the end, everyone is blown away. The deserter is the first to regain consciousness after being buried in the sand. He rushes to the orphan, worried. A mysterious woman pops out in the middle of the desert, but immediately disappears. The clan leader gives them a horse to thank the young man for saving their lives. In the city's main entrance, two bodies of assassins are hanging and one of them is showing a tattoo on her arm. Every warrior from each clan gathers inside a post house. Jing Gang arrives hoping to be part of the competition. However, one of the clan members recognizes her as the thief, so they start confronting her. Confident in her fighting abilities, she refuses to give up the totem she stole, so they start to fight. Eventually, she loses and hides before the Grand Tutor arrives. Everyone kneels before him except for Hun. To avoid getting into trouble, the orphan forces him to do so. Later that night, the deserter reveals that he wants revenge by killing the Grand Tutor Guan. He considers anyone who would stop him an enemy, but the orphan reassures him that he is a friend. Worried about not having a third member, the two wander around the city. 
a merchant selling enslaved people catches their attention. The two slaves from the opposite nation fight each other until only one survives. The young girl dupes the deserter into purchasing B. New, the northern slave who survives the match. With a vengeful expression, the poor slave recognizes the weapon Hun is wielding, so she follows them. Jing Gang approaches the two warriors and offers herself as the third member. Having no choice, Hun lets her join the group so they won't be disqualified. Once again, the mysterious woman momentarily appears in Yilong's sight. During the night, while everyone is resting, the slave attempts to kill Hun to get revenge for her father, who was slain in the previous war. The deserter permits her to kill him, but only after he gets his revenge on Guan. The next day, the first challenge begins. While crossing a web-structured chain, each person must remain tied to their members. A couple of traps are put in place causing some clan members to perish. Three clans win the first round, while the other survivors are branded losers. After finding out that the deserter is from the Chu family, the threatened spy sends out three assassins from another clan to kill the warriors of the King Wan clan. They manage to defeat the assassins and capture one of them, but he gets killed by the lackey of the Grand Tutor. At night, the deserters plan to attack, but the two convince him they should just win the tournament and make him the fleet marshal. That way, he can testify and get his revenge against the traitor Guan. Witnessing the transformation of the deserter, the confused slave sneaks to his former owner. She helps every other slave escape. The slave owner catches and chokes her. She manages to counter and flip him to the ground. Screaming out of anger, she lets her previous merciless master escape. Contemplating what she will do next, she goes inside her former cage and lies there until she falls asleep. The second challenge begins, and the objective is to steal an egg from a deserted monster known as the Beast King. Bred for war by the Southern Zhao Kingdom, the ferocious creature looks like a giant snake with a crown-like headpiece embedded with sharp thorns on its scalp. Inside the lair, the innocent girl almost gets attracted to a poisonous flower, but by saving the girl, the deserter gets poisoned. Being familiar with the flower, Hun describes the antidote as an orange moss that grows deep inside the cavern. The falcon, one of the contenders, manages to find the egg but drops it when the ferocious monster appears. Jing Gang steals the egg and makes a run for it with Yi Long. They lure the beast into a narrow tunnel, causing it to get stuck. Then they collect the orange moss from its crown and give it to the Hun. Now the special effects here are second to none. They can definitely compete with whatever Hollywood has to offer. When the orphan sees that the Beast King's headpiece is causing it pain, he steps in to help and remove it. The monster abandons the group after Yi Long promises to return the egg after the competition. They return to the city as the sole winners. However, they are disheartened to learn that they must compete with one another for the title of Field Marshal. The mysterious woman appears during the heated discussion over who should come out on top. Introducing herself as an old friend of the orphan's father, she leads them to the magical forest and assures them that all of their concerns will be answered. They discover that the orphan is the true heir to the throne of Northern Yan. After smearing blood on his arms, a totem of his bloodline appears, proving his origins. Why didn't they reveal anything from Jing Gang's past? Did they just forget to include it? It was such a waste that she didn't get a backstory like all the others. When the deserter finds out that one of his teammates is from Northern Yan, he explodes angrily and storms off. Binu appears as the deserter wanders through the woods. She realizes her hatred toward the Southern Zhao is why she is still trapped even though she's finally free from being a slave. Realizing that he is the same as the slave, the deserter rushes back to find his team members. While preoccupied with her team's circumstances, Jing Gang gets ambushed by Guan and his men. The deserter surrenders to save the girl, but the heartless spy stabs the young girl from behind. Yilong weeps after she takes her last breath. He buries her properly before going back to the city. Falcon learns from the orphan that Grand Tutor Guan orchestrated the competition to incite bloodshed amongst the clans, ultimately leading to King Southern Zhao's death. Knowing that he can't do it alone, Yilong asks him to find the leaders of the other clans and bring them back to stop the evil plan of the traitor. The Grand Tutor accuses the deserter of murder, but before the deserter is executed, the orphan shows up. With the king's permission, he will fight Hun instead of just being executed. At first, the deserter seems to have lost his will to live, but realizing it is not too late, he and the orphan continue to fight and work together. 
Finally, Grand Tutor Guan begins the last stage of his plan. Soldiers from Northern Yan blending within the crowd start attacking. To trap the king, the traitor orders the guards to bring the king to the pavilion. This time, he reveals himself as the traitor and locks them inside. In the middle of their battle, one of the enemy's top soldiers recognizes the orphan as the rightful king of Northern Yan and bows to him before being killed in an unfortunate accident. The deserter fights the traitor's guard dog, the slave woman saves the deserter and sacrifices herself in the process. Members of the other clans show up to lend support to the king, and the traitor fills the arena with flammable liquid to burn the arena and suffocate the king and his subjects to death. The king almost gets burned alive in the pavilion. Fortunately, the deserter and one of the warriors manage to open up the door in time to save him. Guan tries to use a glider to escape the chaos, but the orphan stops him. The traitor drops into the middle of the arena. Hun rushes towards Guan, ending the life of Grand Tutor Guan in rage. After the chaos, all the warriors receive their respective awards from the king. The title of Grand Field Marshal goes to Hun, while the king grants Yilong's request to return the egg from the beast. Jingang's bravery is commemorated with a statue in the city. The final scene depicts their separation with Yi Long heading back to Northern Yan to reclaim his throne. In this film, the combination of fantasy in an old Chinese setting worked well for the most part. The film's world building and action sequences are its bread and butter and they're both extremely well done. Although the storyline may not be very deep, viewers will enjoy the fantastic choreography combined with the fantasy creatures that surround the plot. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. And don't forget to suggest movies that you want us to recap in the comments down below.